guys, it's Amber. Welcome to my channel and to another what's in the book bag. Yes, I do use a Bath and Body Works bag for my library books. So these are some library books that I just picked up from the library to add to my lovely TBR bookcase. And I love this bookcase because you can move it around. It's so cute. I love it. Um, and I can decorate it all cute with my little cute as a button warmer and my what I'm currently reading little letter board, which if you saw my haul um, of bookish things, I did get in from this was from the bookish box, I think is where I got it. But look how cute that is. So cute. So it looks like a little book. I love it. So Needless to say, I love my little TBR book shelf. Um, okay, so let's jump into it. These are some books that I just picked up from the library. And let's see what they are. Okay. First off, I've heard really good things about this. I'm super excited. The, it's just called Heartless Hunter. Um, in the U.S. it's called Heartless Hunter. In other places in the world, um, it's called The Crimson Moth. For some reason, they changed it for the U.S. I'm not sure why. Um, but this is The Crimson Moth, book one, and it's by Kristen Siccarelli. I think is how, how you say it. Siccarelli, something like that. Sorry if I'm butchering the last name. I apologize. Okay, so this is uh, take takes place in a world um, where witches are real, magic is real, and witches are being hunted. They're outlawed from practicing magic, and um, there is this girl. What is her name? Rune, who is a witch but she's like undercover no one knows that she's a witch and she's actually part of like high society and so uh during the day she um acts like she's this airheady socialite type of girl uh and then at night she goes and rescues uh fellow witches from the witch hunters to um, keep them from being killed. And there is an enemies to lovers type of trope in this because uh, there's a guy named Gideon. He is a witch hunter and, you know, antics ensue from there. But I've heard phenomenal things about this. So I'm very, very excited to read it. So that is Heartless Hunter. Okay, next up, I don't know why I got this one now because this actually feels more like it should be a fall read for me, but I saw it again and I was like, oh, you know what? I'm going to pick it up. It is The X Hex by Erin Sterling, who wrote the, what did she write? I know she, what did she write? She wrote a YA book series that I have read and they were really fun. I just don't remember what they are now, but this is a um, rom-com type of book about a girl named Vivian who is a witch and she meets, she has a broken heart and she meets a guy. It looks like it takes place in a small town. It's the first of a three book series, I think, um, but I'm, I'm pretty sure they're like standalone type of books though. Um, so this is the X hex. So I may, I may put it off. I might end up returning it and reading it another time because that kind of feels more like a fall read, like I said. Okay, the next one is the house on uh, in the Cerulean Sea, and this is by T.J. Clun Clune, and I've heard really good things about this. This is a I've been wanting to read it for a while. I'm not really, I, I've heard it's like a whimsical type of book and I love my whimsy fantasy type of stories. Okay, so it's about uh, a guy named Linus Baker 
is a by the book caseworker in the department in charge of magical youth. At 40, he lives in a tiny house with a devious cat and his old records for company, but his quiet life is about to change. Linus is summoned by extremely upper management and given a curious and highly classified assignment, travel to an orphanage on a distant island and determine whether six dangerous magical children are so dangerous, in fact, that they're likely to bring about the end of days. So I've heard really good things about this. I haven't read ever read any of his books, but all of his books kind of I've heard have that like whimsical type of magical realism feel to them and so i wanted to pick this one up so that's that one then i am a fan of lee bardugo so i did have to pick up her newest book called the familiar this is a standalone book as far as i know and I really, I, this, the cover is cool. It's, it's really neat, but at the same time, it grosses me out because of the little scorpion. I don't like scorpions. And so it, it like, it gives me the heebie-jeebies, but it is a neat cover. And then I love that this one is black. And then we have the beautiful inside covers with, a. Uh, pomegranate so that's really neat so this is a historical um fantasy type book and it takes place in like the 1500s and it has to do with um in spain and it has to do with a girl named Lu Lu lucia lucia cotado um and she has a little bit of a mag magical ability, but and that she used to get through her days as a scullery maid in this household. Um, and she ends up, I don't really know much more about that. Uh, oh, except, yeah, this is during like the Spanish Inquisition and she actually has Jewish blood in her. And so, um, yeah, so. It looks good. <laughs> we'll see. I love her Shadow and Bone series, the whole Grishaverse. Love it. Uh, so that is the familiar. I just can't, I just got to ignore the scorpion on the cover. Okay. This is The Prisoner's Throne by Holly Black. I did finish The Stolen Air. This is the second book in the duology, um, part of the, um, it's a continuation of the, uh, dang it, I can't remember. It's an Elfheim, a novel of Elfheim, but it's a continuation of the Cruel Prince series, um, The Stolen Air, and this one, it's a duology. Um, it has to do with a sibling of a main character in those books. Um, so this is a continuation. I'm excited to uh, start it so I can finish the series and see what happens. So if you haven't watched my um, May wrap up video, I'll talk more on the stolen air on that. So I don't want to spoil anything, but it's a good book. Okay, the next one I picked up is What the River Knows by Isabel Ibanez. And this I've heard is kind of like Indiana Jones type of vibe, Indiana Jones, um, or why am I blanking? What's another one? Um, National, not National Treasure, The Mummy, that type of vibe. So it is, let's see, Bolivian, Argentinian, Inez Oliveira belongs to the glittering upper society of 19th century Buenos Aires. And like the rest of the world, the town is steeped in old world magic that's been largely left behind or forgotten. Inez has everything a girl might want except for the one thing she yearns for most, her globe-trotting parents who frequently leave her behind. So um, it's an adventure story. Yeah, that, this says the mummy meets death of the Nile. 
in a, this lush, immersive, historical fantasy filled with adventure, rivals to lovers, and shocking twists and turns. So, heard good things about this one too. I wanted to pick that one up, and I'm running out of room. Okay, and then the last one, this was part of my um, books that I wanted, to, was Antipas, I can talk, I can talk, um, anticipating reading uh, for the month of May. So this actually came out April 30th, but I included it in that list, and it is Miss Morgan's Book Brigade. So it came in in the library for me, and it's based on a true story about this um, lady named Jessie Carson, who after World War I goes to France to um, start a like traveling book library, especially for children. So it's about her and then she ends up disappearing, I guess, or something like that. So in 1987, another librarian named Wendy Peterson stumbles across a passing reference to Jesse Carson while working in the archives of the New York Public Library. And so she becomes consumed in learning more about Jesse and um, what happened to her. So I'm excited to try this one. Anything that has to do with libraries and books and, li and librarian, you know, that sort of thing, I'm always down for it. So this is by, I didn't say who it was by, Janet Skaslin. I'm sorry, I'm, I know I'm probably butchering all these names. Janet Skaslin Charles. It's something like that. So, <laughs> Miss Morgan's Book Brigade. So, that's it, you guys. That's everything I picked up from the library. Tell me in the comments what you're reading. And do any of these books sound good to you? Um, have you read any of these books? And if so, tell me if you like them in the comments as well. So, well, we'll see. We'll, we'll see what ends up happening with those. But I appreciate all of you guys. And uh, please like and subscribe if you haven't. And until next time, TTFN. Ta-ta for now.